Today, I thought we would bring you an update of some upcoming videos that we're planning to do and some changes to the channel. We, I have decided that we're going to actually go out on the road over the coming months and shoot some videos and bring you some experiences while out on the road, bring you some tips and tricks, and as well as some uh, locations, great locations to go to while you're traveling. So our RVing TV has gone out and purchased a tow vehicle as well as a fifth wheel in order to do this. We're gonna bring you a video of both of those units so that you can see some of the equipment. We're also gonna bring you some videos on some buying tips as well as some great accessories. Now we're not gonna do this like a lot of channels are doing where people are learning as they go along. We're going to actually take my previous experience. I am actually an RVer, have traveled for a while in different types of RVs, ranging from travel trailers up to the large, you know, 43, 44 foot motorhomes themselves. And uh, we'll bring you a review of the equipment. But on top of being an RVer, I've also been an owner and a salesperson at an RV dealership for the last 14 years. So I wanna bring some real life, real world experience to help those of you that are looking to get into the RVing lifestyle and aren't quite sure what to look for. So we'll bring you some of those tips and then bring you some uh, real life experience as well. Now there's lots of information out there, but I can tell you from having been in the RV industry for 14 years, there's a lot of misinformation out there as well. So we're gonna try to bring it to you from inside knowledge and experience. So I encourage all the viewers that if you have questions, feel free to submit them through our comment section. If there's certain video you'd like to see, we'd be happy to see if we can do that for you and bring you that real life experience. So, you know, please subscribe, click the bell down below, and that way you'll be notified of upcoming videos. Now, today we're going to actually do a review on our own vehicle. So I mentioned in our trailer, and, and you would have seen it in uh, just prior to this video starting, that we're, we're going to be traveling out on the road. So today we're going to do a review of a 2019 GMC Sierra 2500 Heavy Duty. This is actually our vehicle that our RVing TV is going to use. And I'll explain why we chose it and why it's a 2019 as it is a pre-owned vehicle. Uh, our VN TV has decided to go the route of a truck and a fifth wheel because we had a very unique opportunity. As I mentioned, I've had ownership in a RV dealership, so we had an opportunity. This truck was actually purchased by our dealership. Original intentions were as a tow vehicle, but also as a plow vehicle. And that makes this very uniquely set up for towing fifth wheels. So this is a 2019 GMC Sierra 2500 heavy duty. We purchased this with about a little over 2,000 kilometers on it. So almost brand new shape. Very rare to, to get a vehicle with that low mileage. It is a basic truck itself. So you normally classify this as a work truck. It has a number of options, which I'll go through in a moment which make it similar to an SLE. Now you can get these 2500 series all the way up to Denali packages, but we find, and we'll cover this in a buying video, we find that at a certain value level, when you look at what you're paying for your truck and your fifth wheel, it may be more advantageous, depending on the type of traveling you're doing, to go into a motorhome at that point. Here we wanted to keep the traveling a little more grassroots, keep it at a really good value so that the average consumer can do it. It's great to look at these high-end vehicles, but how many of us want to be spending $80,000, $100,000, $120,000 on a pickup truck? I can tell you from most of the customers that have come into the dealership, 
They're not looking to spend that money. So here's a great truck that's gonna give you everything you need, allow you to travel comfortably, but at a good price as well. So let's talk a little bit about this truck and how it's set up. Now, anytime I purchase a vehicle for any of our companies or for myself personally, I always like to keep the window sticker when the dealer delivers it to me. I always ask them to keep it because it's great to take a quick note if I'm ever having to buy an aftermarket accessory for it or I want to go back and check something equipment wise because I'm planning to make a change to the truck. So the 2500 series, as you can imagine, is a very robust and heavy duty truck. And if you're towing a fifth wheel, realistically you want to go 2500 series. Now this is a gas powered unit. This has the six liter Vortec engine. After 2019, that has changed. GM has gone to a 6.6 .6 liter gas engine. You can also get these with the Duramax diesel in it. We've chosen to go gas at this time because the gas trucks have become so capable that they are pulling within 500 pounds of a diesel from a towing perspective. Now there's probably several viewers yelling at the screen right now saying, but the torque, but the torque and the power. Yes, a diesel will get you more torque, more low end torque compared to a gas and you're going to get a little bit better fuel economy. However, having owned a Duramax diesel and it's a great truck and looking and having the option to go gas Right now, based on all the circumstances out there, I would actually go gas. You're going to save yourself a ton of money from the diesel cost. You're going to save yourself some expense maintenance-wise down the road, as diesels are a little more expensive. But the main reason is the cost of fuel here in Ontario. Diesel is more expensive than gas, where years ago it was reversed. And the mileage of the gas has gotten a lot better and the diesels have actually come down a bit from where they were historically 12, 15 years ago. So we are seeing with some regular daily driving, we are seeing that this truck will run anywhere from about, you know, 14, 15 liters per hundred kilometers to about 19 to 20 liters per hundred kilometers. And that mileage will drop when we're towing a fifth wheel. The diesels we've seen, now this was on a slightly older diesel, a number of years old, but typically that diesel, we were seeing 12 to 16, 17 liters per 100 kilometers. So realistically, we're talking a couple of liters per 100 kilometers. Yes, over lots of traveling, it will be savings but it's not gonna be that much savings. And then you factor that currently diesel is about 10 to 12 cents per liter more than the gas, you're probably gonna even out fairly close along the way. So we've gone six liter Vortec. Now, this truck also has a six speed heavy duty transmission with a grade brake and tow haul mode on it, also has hill start assist, and that's both whether you're leaning forward or, or uh, leaning down a hill or up a hill, that if you do actually come to a stop, it will actually hold the truck momentarily for you before you get going again. Now, there's a couple of options I mentioned that were put on this truck. Now, this was done by the dealer. They had already ordered these trucks as plow trucks or potentially plow trucks for customers. So they did a really great job at equipping it. Uh, first of all, they did some nice enhancements. The six inch chrome steps, which I'll show you as we, when we do our walk around. We have the spray in bed liner. You can get it done after the fact, but getting it done at the factory is so much nicer and it's basically around the same cost anyways. Then they put in the snow plow prep package. So if you're planning to tow with a truck, you want to have one of two packages, in my opinion. You either want to have the snow plow prep or you want to have the camper package. And that'll give you some enhancements. So 
beyond that this truck has the Z85 heavy duty suspension package on it, when you get the plow package, it puts in even heavier duty front springs because normally you'd be pulling, uh, putting a plow on this, putting a lot of front end weight. So you're gonna get the heavier springs up front as well, which just give extra stability when you're towing down the road. Also in the plow prep package, you get some under skirt, um, or sorry, some under body skirts, just to give some protection to some key points. And then you get a 220 amp alternator. So you get a much more power up, powerful alternator, which is really handy because when you're towing that trailer and you're powering the lights on the trailer, but you're also charging the battery on the trailer, and in our case, we've gone dual batteries, which I'll explain in the video with the fifth wheel. There's more charge going back to the trailer. So the standard alternator would be 150 amps. Now it's 220 amps. Uh, dealer's also gone and upgraded to the 18 inch rims. But the real important thing, because there's two options that you can use. You can go 18 inch rims, with standard tires, which are just a regular all season, more of a passenger style, a little bit quieter when you drive, or you can go to the all terrains. These all terrains are Michelin's. I recommend going to the all terrains, especially if you're going to be going through any kind of snow belts or leaving in the winter months, you're gonna get a little bit better bite in the deep snow if you end up crossing it. Uh, these Michelin's are actually pretty quiet on the road even though they're all terrains. Uh, they put in the molded splash guards ordered from the factory, installed by the dealer. This is something we would do or I'd recommend anyways, rather than buying aftermarket guards. And they're basically the same price, but you're getting them installed. Electronic transfer case, rather than the manual transfer case, which is worth every single penny and it's a very reasonable option. Uh, engine block heater, auxiliary battery. So not only do we have the 220 amp alternator, but we have a secondary battery on board. Just giving us a little more juice, backup, heaven forbid we happen to drain down one of the batteries. So a nice, nice little feature. Um, I mentioned engine block heater in case you're needing to use this in any cold weather. And then we have upfitter switches, which I'll show you when we hop inside, and our roof marker lights. We'll also take a look at a couple of accessories that we've put on this truck just to give you an idea of why we've done that and for our traveling purposes. So I'm going to come over and grab the camera now, and we'll take a walk around the truck and take a little closer look at some of the accessories and features. So you'll notice right at the moment, as I mentioned, plow package. We currently have our harness on it. We're using a V-blade plow, which will be coming off this truck very shortly. Very nice front end, very sculptured. GMC always has a really nice front end on their trucks, a little bit nicer than the Chevys. Uh, of course, GMC is that luxury brand for GM. Now, when you go to the 2500 series, the towing mirrors are standard, and these mirrors do pull out so that you get really good visibility on your trailer. And of course, they're a double mirror. Now, something to note, this truck is a double cab. We've gone the double cab route. The reason for that is it keeps the wheelbase just a little bit tighter compared to a crew cab and still allows you to have that second door to put gear in the back if you happen to have some friends, you know, at the campground that you meet, you're going out for dinner one night, they can still hop in the back and have really good space. Now, if I was buying this truck, I had a really young family, was going to do a lot of traveling with the family, I would possibly look at the crew cab over the double cab, because it's gonna give the kids a little more space, a little more room for their feet, a little bit of extra gear space. 
but seeing that really there's going to be two people traveling in this 99% of the time, the double cab will actually give better maneuverability and keep the truck a little bit shorter. And unless you have a massive garage to put this in, you'll squeeze it into your garage a little bit better as well. So that'll, that'll be a difference. It does have the standard six and a half foot box on it. Now we've gone and put a tonneau cover on board. The tonneau cover is an X-Tang cover. And what's nice is it is a tri-fold cover. So you'll notice I can do that with one hand. It also has the flexibility that if I needed to load this truck and there was nothing in the bed, it can actually flip up up against the back of the truck and the back window and that way I can use the entire bed rather than just a portion of it. I've also gone with the vinyl tonneau cover because sometimes you'll go get gear and when you have the tonneau cover down and that gear sticks out just a little bit you can still close the cover and it'll push up a little bit against the vinyl here. It'll just gently push up on it and as long as you don't put too much pressure you can sneak away with keeping the bed nice and dry and keep rain out of it for that trip where if you go with a hard cover it doesn't give you that flexibility. Um, so that is a little feature. Now you have your step bumpers and of course there's a backup camera and the 2500 comes with the easy up and down tailgate with the lock. So you can see you just release it and it comes down really easy. Now I'm going to hop up into the bed here because we have put a fifth wheel on board and we've gone a little bit different. I'll do a review of the fifth wheel itself but I'll just cover it quickly. Uh, ignore the sandbags. Normally I would not have this many in there. As I mentioned there's a plow on this truck because we do have a commercial property that we're plowing for the next month or so and the weight of the sandbags gives a little extra weight in the snow but also offsets the weight up front with the plow because it's a very large V plow. Now we are, have gone with a Demco auto slide as our choice for fifth wheel. There's a lot of fifth wheel options. On a six and a half foot box you are going to need a slider fifth wheel of some kind. The auto slide is exactly as the name says. It automatically slides. So when you're maneuvering, and we'll do a review of this and post a video so you can see how it moves. When you're maneuvering, this head will actually slide back and forth here. You can see this track. And if I bring the camera down a little closer, you'll notice that plate, how it's actually angled. So as pressure is put on it, it will swivel back and forth. It also has a four-way swivel, front, back, and side to side. Uh, what I really like about the Demco products, they're really heavily built, and you can see our jaw isn't just a standard jaw. So when it clamps down around your fifth wheel, it really locks it in place, where normally your jaw would have an opening here in the center. And sometimes if you're stuck or put a little too much pressure, those center closing jaws have been known to pop open and you end up dropping your fifth wheel on your truck. I have seen that happen and it is not nice. So this heavy duty fifth wheel is great. Now we've also gone, it, you can't really see it here, but we've also gone with the option not to have the rails in the bed. We've gone with an under rail kit, which means the rails are under the bed. This fifth wheel can come out you put four plastic, uh, I don't want to call them grommets, but they're four plastic pucks basically that drop in place and you'd never know the fifth wheel was even in this truck. Now GM, Ford, Dodge, they do have systems you can option in for towing fifth wheels that GM calls it a puck system that already have the rails in, but you are a little more limited with the hitches that you can choose when you go with some of the factory options. So if you're looking to order a truck, take a look at what fifth wheels you can get. If you like the fifth wheels, absolutely get it from the factory. 
much cleaner, it's, it's factory based, it'll save you a ton of work. Ours, we actually installed ourselves here. You'll see the main plate here, and then if I get you to look up underneath here, you'll see there's a special bracket that goes all the way across, and another one here, and that's what the fifth wheel will drop into and lock in, but there's nothing in the bed catching gear. Now, that just covers some of the basic accessories. Of course, the truck has backup camera, but let's take a look at this 2500 series a little closer. So, you've got a couple of cup holders here in the door. As I mentioned, I'm plowing, I keep a little torch in there in case any locks freeze over. I do like the amount of storage space. So you'll notice some extra pins. I keep a tire gauge. There's some gloves, because some of the fuel stations on the interstates and on the Ontario highways, especially the truck style ones, uh, can get a little messy. Another little cubby hole here, which is great. Of course, your power locks and power windows. Now we've chosen to go with cloth seats. You have the option to upgrade as you go along to leather. In kind of an everyday truck, if you're trying to keep it Re more reasonable in price and very durable. Cloth is great. Leather's very luxurious, don't get me wrong, I love the leather, but I'm actually for our purposes like the cloth better in this case. The reason I like it better is in the cold weather when you hop in, the seats are not as cold as leather gets. Leather tends to get colder and then in the extreme heat, in the summer heat and humidity, you hop in the leather and you know, you kind of feel sweaty on it because it's very hot and the truck has to cool. Again, the cloth seats don't, don't relay that to your skin that cold or that heat in the same way. So it's a really great advantage and I'm not burning fuel by remote starting the truck to run air conditioning or heater to warm it up so I can hop in on the seats. So just something to think about. Um, this is for height adjustment, and then this lever here is actually for the bolster in the back of the seat. So it's a very comfortable seat overall. As we hop in, we'll take a look, and I'll explain another feature here. You'll notice these buttons and the slide buttons here. That's our integrated brake controller. That is standard in the 2500 series. And then I mentioned electronic shift for the four-wheel drive. So normally, you would actually have, and I'll lean down here, down in the center here, on the floor, you'd normally have a manual shift arm. You definitely want to go with the electronic shift. You simply turn the knob to four-wheel high or four-wheel low. You'll get an indicator on the digital dash that it's switching into four-wheel drive or back to two-wheel drive, and it's nice and neat and keeps your floor clean. We do have our automatic lights, which is a great feature. And of course, let's start up the dash so you can get an idea. A really nice dash. And you have your speed in the center. You can, whoops, we'll silence the radio. You can also turn this so that you have a few different settings, trip and fuel, and you can see average fuel economy. Right now it's showing about 17.6. We've been putting around, so it's not been ideal. Typically we find we're down in the 15. 14, 15 range, uh, but when I'm doing a bit of plowing or moving things, I'll see it get up to 17, 18, even 20. Now, when we come to our center stack, you have your traditional radio setup, but what we also have here, I've already set the USB wire inside our center console. You'll notice it's nice and large. You can keep Lots of gear down here. I have extra masks right now with everything that's going on. There's a 12 volt plug here and a couple, a USB and an auxiliary input. So this USB will actually allow you to connect your phone. 
And when you do that, that will put the Android Auto or Apple CarPlay on the main screen. Now, what I like about this screen is, whoops, we can search different areas. Um, when you give it a command, you can either load your address by voice commands, or you can type it in, or you can select it if you've already pulled it up on Google Maps, if you have Android, uh, which we're using. It will tell you what the traffic situation is like, if there's slowdowns, if there's an accident. It'll show it on this screen. Now, you can also use a variety of apps on this screen. Um, so I have iHeartRadio, Spotify, of course, we've got our phone, we've got our Challenger. Now you'll notice there's a charge point app. I actually have a couple of charging apps on here, not for this truck, obviously, but I do have an electric car, uh, a GM, a Volt, and I can use those to help locate charging points. And what's nice, it's all on my phone, so when I go from one vehicle to another, all that information stays constant. So this is a great feature for when you're traveling because you can see if there's slowdowns uh, or if there's an accident and it'll give you an option to reroute around it, which not all GPSs do. We have traditional climate controls. This truck doesn't have the automatic controls, which I'm fine with because I don't play around with my controls a lot. And then we mentioned earlier upfitter switches. So you're gonna notice these switches. Typically you'd have your traction control off, you'd have your light for your box, but then we have four additional auxiliary switches. My brain wanted to say that all at once. So these four switches, you can add equipment. Some people want to add extra lights if they're planning to go off-road. Well, now instead of having to drill into your dash or screw additional switches underneath the dash, you can actually, these are pre-wired, bring the wiring to a specific point, hook, which is hooked up to these switches, and you can have auxiliary lights. You could have music. Uh, you could connect speakers. There's a variety of things that you could do with those. So it's a nice feature. Really good storage. There's a little compartment down here. Uh, right now, this is just our control for our plow. There's another 12 volt. We have the double glove box, which is very typical for GM. And then of course, this is a split bench. So the center can actually be flipped up to sit a third person. Not in this truck, won't happen, but it is there if you ever needed it. And it gives a great console here. Nice and big. You could throw your phone up here if you wanted. Three cup holders. And I like the three because so many times you have two. And right now with COVID, we're actually carrying our hand sanitizer here. And I can still have a, you know, a cup of coffee for myself and a cup of coffee for a second passenger. Now let's go around and hop into the back of the truck. And let's take a look at the space in in the truck from a seating position. So we're gonna come around to the passenger side. I have some gear on the driver's side, just in case anyone's wondering why. And you'll notice, you know, good seats, nice and comfortable. It doesn't look as spacious, but what I'm gonna do is I am gonna hop in here. And you'll notice some tools. I always, when I travel, like to carry some sockets with me. Um, so what we'll do, I'm gonna flip up the screen so I can see this a little better. We'll give you a shot here. Uh, I'm 5'9", and you'll notice there's decent space here. The front seat is set back a little bit more from the last passenger, but there's actually some decent space. And that way, you know, you can sit back here, an adult can sit, be comfortable. I wouldn't travel cross country with this. 
because that'd be a long trip and I don't like to travel in the back anyways, but if you were going out to dinner with some people, this would actually be perfectly fine. You'd have lots of room, be very comfortable, and you know, you'd have a night out on the town. So let's hop outside. And as I mentioned, that opening is a decent sized opening so you can put groceries and people can get in and out. The steps, the six inch chrome steps from the factory are already there. They're nice and wide so when you step down they're very stable. Um, now, something I didn't mention with this truck is with that six speed transmission you also get a locking differential. And that is really important because that just will give you a little more power if it's wet, uh, or I shouldn't say power, give you a little more grip is why I'm saying power. Basically when you launch and you have that heavy load, whether it be in the bed or towing a trailer, a fifth wheel, and the conditions are a little slippery, it's going to lock up, give you a little better traction, make it easier overall. So that's, uh, in a nutshell, is the 2019 GMC Silverado that we're going to be using for traveling. It's also a great vehicle if you're looking for a truck to be doing some RVing with, um, or just need a truck for everyday purposes. It can be purchased at a really reasonable price point uh, without breaking the bank. It's not going to be cheap, you know, don't misunderstand that. Uh, these are not inexpensive trucks, but you're not going to drop, you know, $75,000, $90,000 on a truck. Uh, much more reasonable and is going to give you a great truck with lots of longevity around it. If you like the video, please click the like button. Check back for more updates and great videos. We're going to be doing some accessory videos. We're also going to bring you our fifth wheel that we're going to use. Uh, please click the bell below if you've subscribed. We are trying to get over 10,000 subscribers, so please and thank you. And uh, if you have some questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. I do try to respond to all the comments and make sure I read all of them. But this is Bruno from RVing TV saying thank you for viewing the video. And please remember, uh, from our background, we like to say, you know, uh, live the dolce vita. Live the sweet life. Make sure you live a great life. Enjoy it as much as you can and, you know, stay safe and be healthy.